Hi, and welcome to Fresh Waves. I'm your host, Bren Masson. Today, we are going to be talking about the pottery show specifically, but all shows. It seems like the shows disappeared for COVID, as so many things did, but they're coming back. I was at the home show recently, and although it wasn't as well attended as I would have thought, I was there in a weekday, and it was during the day, so it was only mostly retired people that were there, which is understandable. But it takes a while for people to get back into the swing of going back out to these shows and and being excited about the shows. My son was went to the sportsman show he picked a weekend day and it was crowded to overflowing and everybody was really excited to be back out so um, this morning we're going to talk to Jennifer Cregan who is a local potter here in Stouffville and we're going to talk about the fact that the craft shows are coming back and people are going out and they're attending these shows and because there's less uncertainty about COVID and other things these shows are being planned in advance. They're being announced in advance and you can book your show in advance. I love looking at the calendar for spring and summer and planning my events. There are go-to events that I will not miss. So I choose those events and then I plan my activities activities in my summer around the events that are not miss kind of events. So this morning, we're very, very happy to have Jennifer Cregan joining us. We will be speaking about the Pine Tree Potters Guild Spring Pottery Sale, which is May 4th, 5th, 6th, and 7th. And you might say to yourself, then why are you telling me about this at the end of March? So that you can plan, just like I do. You can plan going forward. There's no point in telling you about it on the weekend when it's on. It's too late to make a plan. So from now, you can make a plan. Okay, Jennifer, it's lovely to have you back on Fresh Waves. Hi, Brenda. Thanks. Thanks for having me on. I think the last time you and I spoke was before COVID, and we were talking about the Beyond Crafters show that happens in Stouffville in November. (laughs) <laughs> yes, Beyond Craft, uh, yeah. put on by the Latcham Gallery. Mm-hmm. It's a lovely show. So tell us, how did you ever get into doing pottery? Um, well, it was a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> it was 1992, and I had just graduated from university, and it was just something that I was always interested in. I had taken fine art in university at the University of Guelph, and I'd worked with clay and uh, I just was always interested in pottery. I was living in Barrie at the time, and they had a, some evening courses through Georgian College. And I just took a few evening courses there, and I got hooked right away. Hmm. Now, when you talk about courses, do they – I know some people have taken courses at Fleming College, and sometimes when they sign up for pottery, they never get near a wheel. They just sort of make things that are flat. <laughs> For the mm-hmm. first little while. How do yeah. you start out with those courses? The first course that I took, so it was a night course. The first course was hand building. So you just kind of get used to working with the clay and making some hand built stuff, which is easier than working on the wheel. Um, the second course, I started working on the wheel. And that's kind of where you kind of you know, it determines whether you're going to be continue or not because it's so frustrating. It's such a frustrating process and takes so long to uh, be able to do it that you have to kind of almost become obsessed with it to be able to stick with it long enough to be able to come become proficient at it. Yeah, I you know, when you look at the old movie scenes with Patrick Swayze making <laughs> pottery on the wheel and it's just so romanticized and it looks – so easy. I mean, yeah. you just put a slab of clay on this round thing that goes around and around the circles and you add a little water every now and again and you just move your hands and before you is this lovely sculptured vase that everybody would want to have. And I just don't think that that's a realistic impression of how it actually goes when you're learning. Yeah, no, it's definitely one of those things that looks a lot easier than it is. And I've taught um, people before in the past, and they're always surprised about how difficult it actually is because it just looks easy. It does look easy. And it. I think, it, you know, a double half gainer off of the high board looks easy during the Olympics. <laughs> it's not quite so easy when you go to do yeah. it at home. <laughs> Actually, a lot of these things should have do not try this at home written right beside them. (laughs) I think, you know, pottery is one of them. Sometimes you see these things, well, because I have a cottage in Halliburton, 
often at the secondhand store, you will see people's first creations that they get rid of. Yes. Some of them are pretty crude. Yeah, I know. I've seen some in the Karen Share in Stouffville for yeah. sure. Yeah. <laughs> Stuff that people has, have done, has, you know, that, you know, they've done in my class. Well, I guess that's why everybody is not a potter. It's, yeah. it's an art form and it is a definite skill like so many other things in the world. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. Okay. So you, you take the course and you actually soldiered through the, the muck part. Did you did you yeah, ever pick up a piece of clay and throw it at a wall? <laughs> <laughs> I did, I did. And my at the time my husband and I moved to Fort McMurray because he had a job there uh as an engineer and uh they just happened to have like this massive community pottery studio and we were there for 7 years and uh that's where I really kind of turned like a hobby into a profession. Nice. Yeah. Well, I have several of your pieces. So what, what did you start with when you were in Fort McMurray? Did you actually like come up with a whole line of Jennifer Cregan clay specials? Um, it kind of, I worked for another potter there for a year, um, at, at, almost like an apprenticeship type, um, thing. And so I learned a lot from her and it allowed me to do a lot of you know practicing and and uh perfecting different techniques and stuff and so probably after working at it for about 3 years i decided to i came up with like a couple of lines um you know that were suitable to sell in stores and i went to the gift show in edmonton and i just started getting orders and in Western Canada, they don't – because places are so far apart, um, you know, it's not like the GTA, obviously. So, you know, people don't want to drive five hours to go to a craft show. Yeah. <laughs> so um, there are, are actually a lot more kind of like tea houses along the Trans-Canada and, and gift shops and, and little stores. And so it's more of a kind of like store re, uh, retail um, order situation there mm-hmm. than it is in Southern Ontario where it's more kind of centered around people doing shows. Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, it's a, it's a yeah. nice so I just, way to be able to sell your stuff. That's for sure. Yeah, it is. It is good. It was a great start, but um, pottery isn't the easiest thing to package up and ship. <laughs> oh, that's true. So uh, when we did move back to Ontario, I vowed that I was not going to ship another piece of pottery because I had spent, you know, so much money on bubble wrap and you know, you know, carting uh, packages to Canada Post to put in the mail and everything that I just thought, no, I'm going to be like, I'm, I'm, I'm only going to get places that are close enough to drive to. <laughs> No, you had reason. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. But it was a great, it was a great start for sure. So you came back to Ontario and then did you just get into doing all the craft shows that are around in and around the? Yeah, I came back to Ontario and uh, approached some stores, but then also probably within a year or two started doing the one of a kind show downtown. Oh, mm-hmm. I've heard that yeah. that has a huge price tag. Yeah, it is an expensive show to do. The booth fee is expensive, um, and it's a time commitment for sure. Um, you know, Christmas is uh, 11 days long, but um, you do also have the option of doing like a half show, five or six days. So I've done I've done both of those options, and then the spring is five days. It is an expensive booth fee, but um, they get the numbers through the building, and so it's always been worthwhile for me. Like, it's always been worth it to do that show. Well, that's good, and your stuff is beautiful, I must say. I own several pieces, and my mug that I'm drinking with currently while we are doing this show is one of yours. (laughs) Ah, thank you. (laughs) Okay, so you... You are an artist, so your stuff is very marketable. And have you ever kind of tried to do something that you just knew would sell? Or have you always stuck to your guns with just doing stuff that's beautiful? Because every piece I've seen is just darn beautiful. Ah, thank you. Well, I actually kind of consider myself, um, you know, a a production potter. So I do enjoy making stuff that people, pieces that people are going to use, um, so I kind of tend to go flow towards that way anyway, like stuff that people are going to buy. Um, 
so yeah, like, but ultimately, you know, the reason why, you know, I got into this business and wanted to work for myself is because I wanted to do the things that I want to do and make the things that I wanted to make. So it's, it's kind of a bit of a balance. Uh, you know, I make the things that I want to make and I'm, I'm lucky that they, they sell well too. Mm -hmm. What do you think about the, the feeling here of having handmade pottery? Do people find it to be a special thing? Like, do they really enjoy that piece that's unique and definitely handmade as opposed to something that's mass produced and manufactured in some other place? I think so. Um, you know, I have a lot of people that tell me, uh, once they, you know, buy one of my mugs or somebody gives them one of my mugs, they said like, I can't drink in anything else, you know, because, they're used to drinking in kind of like a commercially made mug, something that you'd pick up like at a big box store or something. And once you feel something that's been like handmade, it's totally different and it really changes the experience. Um, you know, I take a lot of time kind of like, you know, making my handles by hand and making sure the fit of the mug in your hand feels good and the handle feels good and there's enough like room in the handle for your fingers to sit comfortably and stuff. So, um, I do have a lot of people that say that, um, you know, it makes a difference. And I always say too, that food always tastes better, you know, when it's served out of pottery, I don't know what it is, but it just, it just, that, that kind of like handmade feel seems to kind of like, you know, um, get transported into the piece. I think it does too, but, um, I, I got introduced to pottery when I went to France and I was living with my aunt who had a place in uh, Dulafi, which is outside of Montelemar, which is kind of close to Avignon. For those who don't know where it is, it's in the north end of Provence. And mm -hmm. all of her dishes were handmade pottery, plates, right. side plates, cups, mugs, you name it. It was all pottery. It was all chipped. <laughs> <laughs> but it was all pottery, and I guess the good stuff came out, the good pottery, when it was a special occasion and that didn't have chips in it. But it there's a specific pottery to that region, and people like it. It's a kind of a goldy color. And, okay. Um, but I would say that by and large, everywhere I went, it was all the same. People gravitated towards the handmade pottery, even in mm -hmm. the little cafes and restaurants, whereas I don't see that here. And I have a lot of friends who are still, oh, it's Royal Dalton, oh, it's Wexford, or whatever it is, and it's fine bone china. And I just didn't find that in France. In France, it seemed like everybody was more into the handmade pottery, and the plates were beautiful. They were absolutely stunning. And then you get all the different kinds of pottery. So have you yes. played around with different pottery and different firings? Uh, yeah, I do actually right now, like I use two different clays. I use porcelain and then I'm actually using like a dark um, gray stoneware too, which is kind of an interesting clay. But, um, you know, I've mainly just kind of like fired high fire pottery, which uh, is um, – it's non-porous, so it's it's uh, fired to a higher temperature, um, so it's able to go into like the microwave and the oven because it, it doesn't absorb any any moisture. Mm. Um, you know, earthenware, which is beautiful too. It's the stuff kind of that you would see from Portugal or Greece or you know <clears throat> Spain or Mexico. Even it's um, still porous, which is why it's not recommended to be used in the oven or microwave. Mm -hmm. I've never really worked with that before, but um, yeah, I've kind of mainly stuck to kind of like high fire pottery, but yeah, you're right. Like certain areas definitely have um, kind of like pottery traditions, like Minnesota has like a large pottery tradition and, and, and also South, uh, North and South Carolina, mm. um, around Asheville. And you would just see it's more common for people to be using pottery on a day to day basis. I find like a lot of times people are afraid to use it. They don't want to, they feel like it has to be washed by hand or they, they don't want to put it in the dishwasher. And I'm like, no, 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 no. Like it's meant to be used, you know, like. Um, so I think sometimes if people aren't used to it, they're still a little bit, um, afraid by it. But I mean, 
you know, it's any, anything, any dish can break. (laughs) Yeah, that's true, actually. (laughs) For sure it is. The good ones anyway. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like nothing is foolproof. (laughs) So York stuff can go in. That's what I was going to talk to you about, the chipping and stuff. Mm -hmm. I I think in many ways it gave pieces character. And my, Mm -hmm. my aunt always had a little metal file in her cutlery drawer and Mm. she could file down the pottery so that it was a smooth edge and it wasn't going to cut your face or something. But, Mm -hmm. um, by and large, is it durable? Um, it is durable. Like the higher fire temperature pottery is definitely more durable than an earthenware. Um, uh, because it's solely vitrified, which means it's, uh, you know, there's, it's not porous at all. Mm-hmm. Um, so it is durable, but like I said, you know, stuff happens, uh, you know, sometimes usually I find what happens is like, you know, somebody will say, Oh my, you know, my mug just like cracked right down the middle. But, you know, usually, and that has happened to me too, but usually it's because like, Somebody's been unloading the dishwasher and just bonked it against the stone countertop or something or yeah. dropped it. And, you know, so, uh, you know, it's going to happen, but it's it's just as durable, if not more durable than anything else, for sure. Mm-hmm. And everything is going to crack. So, yeah, if you bash it against the side by accident, as someone did yeah. with one of my mugs. Well, I went to an <laughs> interesting po- pottery show in Quebec, just outside of Mont Tremblant. I think it was in... Um, Val David, and it's the uh, 101 or 1001. Yeah, 1001, I think. Yeah, potters. Mm. And they had, first of all, they had two really interesting things. One was when you walked in, because there were so many potters all there, and they're there for eight weeks or something, they mm. have uh, a wall of pottery with the person's name underneath it. So you can stand in one place and look at this enormous wall, and kind of say, oh, I want to check out booth number 17. I want to check out 23. I want to check out 150. And the, you look on your little map and then you can go to that place. Mm-hmm. And then if you find you're walking around and you're getting totally overwhelmed, you can go back to that wall <laughs> mm-hmm. and unwind a bit and focus on what you want. I want a berry pot. <laughs> Where do I get right. one? And the other thing they had that I really liked was a mesh cage. And in this mesh cage that looked like a, a, a wall or a divider of some sort was, it was just filled with broken pottery. Oh, cool. And it looked amazing. And I yeah. have seen river rock light applications or, um, coffee tables made with a wire crib and then filled with river rocks. And mm-hmm. now I'm on a mission to fill mine with broken pottery but of course as soon as i say that it's been two years since someone's broken a glass or a cup or not a glass but a cup or something or a mug that i could put in my collection yeah Yeah. (laughs) so i think during covid i ended up throwing it out because it was one of those things where the kids are saying mom you're becoming a hoarder (laughs) (laughs) but it looked so cool on that wall but i guess they're going from hundreds of people with pottery to, right. I'm just trying to collect it myself. I was going to yeah. end up with a really, really tiny little table. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's cool. But you could still use broken pottery for mosaic and stuff. Oh, yeah. yeah. There are people that do, um, you know, different mosaics and stuff with broken pottery. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, they would have to go to people like you, I guess, and say, hey, anything broken that you don't want, pass my way. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. And I guess on the topic of of knowing what is durable and what is going to suit your needs, I guess people have to actually talk to the potter. If you if you approach people, I think by and large, they're they're happy to talk to you and tell you about the pieces that they've made. Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, um, yeah, potters love, you know, talking about their work like any creative person does. And uh, yeah, so they'll tell you about the process or any questions that you have about it. Yeah, for sure. And what about the expense of it? It does seem to be more expensive than going to a big box store and buying a 16-piece setting for $55. Yeah, it's definitely more expensive because it's handmade. And, um, you know, the, the thing with pottery is that, um, the price is all in the labor. Like it, it takes a long time to be able to uh, make pieces by hand. But, 
Um, you know, it's just, it's, it's the difference between having something, you know, and using something in your day-to-day life that's made by a machine or something that's made by hand. There's a, a different feel to it. Um, and, uh, yeah, so it's, you know, you have to kind of like decide whether that's worth it to you, you know, to have that, that feeling of using something that's, that's handmade. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm on, I'm on working on a 20 year plan now. <laughs> and my my twenty year plan now that I'm a little older than I was before is um, to really take everything that I say. Oh, it's so nice, and you put it away. And when the kids go to use it, and the kids are now all in their twenties, and you say, "Don't no, don't touch it. You're gonna break it." <laughs> I have to think. You know what? This is my twenty year plan. I am going to use for the next twenty years everything that I love. I'm going to take it out of boxes. As a matter of fact, I've been throwing out the everyday stuff that is all chipped and broken and came from a big box store and I'm putting out my handmade pieces that I love and I'm loving them. I really yeah. am. You don't have to have your whole place setting all in handmade pottery, but maybe the casserole dish or that beautiful dish that you display the pasta in or something that can be your handmade pottery. It becomes a showpiece in the middle of your table. Yeah, absolutely. For sure. Yeah. It's, it's meant to be used. I tell people, you know, use it every day. Don't, don't pack it away or tuck it away at the back of the, of the cabinet and be afraid to use it. Um, you know, it's, it's meant to be used and enjoyed. Mm -hmm. I have pieces of pottery that, (laughs) that the potters have actually retired and moved away and I still use their stuff. So you can use it. And you can use it freely without thinking, yeah. oh, I'm going to break it with everything you do. And it, and appreciate it every time. I mean, I might be silly, but when I pick up one of your mugs and it has the the contours around, you know, like it's got the little mm-hmm. rims around and I can put my hand there and I don't feel like I'm going to drop it because there's all kinds of places for my fingers to land. It has mm-hmm. a lovely feel. It really does. Yeah, that's actually, those are called the potter's ribs. <laughs> oh, well, there so you go. Funny. I've been, yeah, I've been so feeling that. your ribs for years, Jennifer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's kind of funny because, um, you know, a lot of times like potters, like I will like kind of trim those down a little bit just because if you leave them in a glazed piece, it becomes too busy because the glaze called, it's called breaking breaks over those and it, the design can come become too complicated, mm-hmm. uh, too visually distracting. But yeah, when you have like a nice kind of like, um, you know, a softening uh, of simple, it. a simple glaze mm-hmm. and, uh, it is a really nice thing to hold, which is, it was kind of more traditional in 1970s pottery. Like a lot of the potters really kind of really like to let, leave those, um, those, uh, lines in. Mm hmm. Well, I guess things come and go, right? Because my daughter just yeah. bought um some stuff for her new house and the lines are very, very visible. And apparently oh, yeah, that's for sure. the trend now is to have those yeah. lines very prominent again. Yeah, that's right. Because it does definitely make something look more handmade and uh more, you know, organic, authentic. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yes. Now, people always think about having pottery just in their kitchen, but you can have pottery anywhere in your house, can't you? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, you know, people kind of like use pieces like a cup for their your their toothbrush or whatever in the bathroom or yeah, anywhere. Yeah. And I've seen applications where people have actually made the base of a lamp with pottery. Yeah. 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 And in yeah, Europe, there's lamps. that's very popular with that kind of pottery. They they make the big balls out of it that's got ash on it when it's fired, so it comes out with all these iridescent patterns all over it. It's very right. very cool looking stuff. <laughs> right? Yeah. So, do you ever get crazy and just go play? Uh, I do sometimes. Yeah, yeah. I uh, I do kind of like, you know, I have like, ideas in my head, things I see, and the ideas kind of percolate for, you know, months, sometimes years. And then, um, yeah, it's fun to just play around. Like, for example, this past Christmas, I started making um, Christmas trees with texture in them. And I just like had so much fun playing for the whole day making all of these like little clay Christmas trees. Oh, cool. Mm-hmm. And did they turn yeah. out, did they turn out to be something that you liked? 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. I sold them at Christmas, and um, yeah, it, it it turned out really it turned out really well. I was happy with the result. Great. Okay, we're going to take our first little break here on Fresh Waves, and when we come back, we'll continue our conversation, and we'll let everybody know about the Pine Tree Potters Guild and their spring pottery sale that's coming up in May. You're listening to Fresh Waves, and this morning we're speaking with Jennifer Cregan of Cregan Clay about pottery. I'm your host, Bren Masson. We'll be back. Hi, we're back on Fresh Waves. I'm your host, Bren Masson. Today we are speaking with Jennifer Cregan of Cregan Clay, and we're talking about pottery and, oh, how to make pottery, how to find pottery, how good pottery can feel. So, Jennifer, tell me about um, the fact that during COVID, you weren't really going anywhere. No one was. Did you just make a bunch more pottery and pack up a warehouse full of it? Or did you find that the emotional feeling of COVID restricted what you were doing? (laughs) You know, if I was not so good at procrastinating, I probably would have packed up a whole warehouse (laughs) and would have been in (laughs) much better shape if I had done that. But, um, you know, when the world kind of like stops, it's hard to kind of like, you know, keep on working, (laughs) Um, you know, and uh, but it didn't last long, actually, because I um, even though I I was um, booked for shows that summer, I had to, you know, those shows were canceled. But um, I had a gallery in Bayfield. Ontario on Lake Huron and that was their busiest summer that they ever had because people wanted to get out still. Um, I think they probably opened up back like maybe in June or July of 2020 and um, they were allowed to open with restrictions but I think people just wanted to kind of like go for a drive, go see a nice Ontario town walk around the downtown in the outs, you know, in the nice weather outside. And, um, yeah, so they were actually quite busy. So it wasn't, it wasn't that long of a break for me. (laughs) Wow. Well, that's good. That's actually good. I think Mm -hmm. art was a really good way of getting through COVID. I think Mm -hmm. people who had, um, either their livelihoods dependent on art or they had art as a hobby, they mm-hmm. fared better because they had something to do, something that gave them purpose. And it, it's very therapeutic in some ways, isn't it? It is. It is. Like I remember early days of, uh, you know, the pandemic. And, and I think one of the first things I was kind of offering some kind of stuff online. So I think the, one of the first things I did was Mother's Day. And so I was doing, I did vases and uh, and kind of offered it as a package filled with tulips and twigs, and then I delivered them. So I remember my husband and I drove around for about two days delivering all these vases that people had ordered online. And um, so that was kind of fun. And I also um, committed uh, a portion of all of my sales for that full year of 2020 went to the food bank. So that was really nice too, mm-hmm. just to be able to kind of like – you know, give back. Um, you know, we were very fortunate here, like that we got to keep our jobs and, um, you know, our kids were home for a little bit, for a little bit, but they ended up, you know, getting jobs. And so we were lucky where we weren't kind of affected that much financially. And so that was kind of nice to be able to, to give back that way. But, um, yeah, it was it was definitely a crazy time, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, it certainly was. And I missed my craft shows and the gymboree mm-hmm. and all the different t- things that I used to do in the summer times. I really missed mm-hmm. them. And I didn't realize how much I enjoyed them. And mm-hmm. as we were speaking of earlier in the show, how much forward planning I do every year. So I have the list of things that I really want to do. And then I plan my summer around those events because those are they're non-negotiable. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it was, uh, it was definitely a different time not having those things to look forward to. Yeah. Yeah, it really was. So mm-hmm. I hear that you are going to be involved in the Pine Tree Potters Guild Spring Pottery Sale. 
Yeah, yeah. Pine Tree Potters, I've been a member, I think, probably since about, like, for 20 years or so, 20, Whoa. 21 years. Um, <clears throat> and, uh, yeah, it's a group um, based out of Aurora. And I think there's about 95 potters all together that belong. They teach classes. Um, and we have two shows a year. Our fall show is a really big show where we um, also have an empty bowls event. So the potters that belong to the guild make about 500 bowls. Um, there's restaurants from the area um, that participate and make soup. So you come to the Empty Bowls event, which is the first day of the sale. You have purchased a ticket at this point because the tickets sell out pretty fast. <laughs> You've purchased a ticket. You go pick out your bowl, and then you go upstairs, and you have, like, uh, as much soup as you, you would like. And it's a great event. And um, we raise money for um, – Welcoming Arms in Aurora and In From the Cold in Newmarket. And I believe, I think we're about 12 years and about $250,000. Wow. That, uh, yeah, so all of the proceeds, 100% of the proceeds go to the two charities. Wow. So that's a great event. So that's the one that's, that's in the fantastic. fall. In the, in the spring, we have our sale always the weekend before Mother's Day. Um, we... Moved to a new venue <clears throat> in Newmarket, the Old Town Hall, and it's been been fantastic there because we're very close to Main Street Newmarket, so we get um, a lot of people coming in from Main Street Newmarket, and um, yeah, we've been doing really well there, and it's a great venue, and uh, yeah, so this year it's May 4th to 7th, we have over 30 potters participating, so Anything that you're interested in in pottery, it's there. So from mugs and plates and butter dishes and bowls to birdhouses and jewelry and just anything that you can think of will be there. Wow. Now, bowls mm -hmm. are really neat. I must say, I could do a whole show just on bowls because they have <laughs> an amazing history, first of all, from an archaeological point of view and things like that. I have a a niece who is um, a specialist in pottery, but ancient, ancient pottery, Celtic pottery. And bowls are always a big part of our society. And mm -hmm. I know that they usually come as a set with whatever dishes you buy from the big box store. But if you take the bowls away and use pottery bowls, again, it's a wonderful use of handmade pottery. You, you can pick up the bowl with both hands and it just feels so different. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. And it's funny because with our empty bowl, with the Pine Tree Potters Empty Bowls event, we've had people that have been coming for... 12 years and, you know, and myself included, because I, you know, usually buy a ticket and, and go every year and pick out a bowl. <clears throat> and, uh, you know, people have a collection of like 12 different bowls that they use for their cereal or yogurt in the morning and soup at lunch. And, and uh, they love it, picking out, you know, all of these different bowls and, and keeping them and using them. So, yeah, they're, they're fantastic to have around and, and get so much use, you know. Mm -hmm. And I think we should tell the listeners that they don't always have to match. I mean, oh, yeah, for sure. Sometimes it's fun if they do, but I actually yeah. think it's more fun when they don't. I love yeah. it when people sit down at my table and I can actually choose a bowl that suits the personality of the person that I'm having over. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah, the same thing. Like we, we did a reno uh, a few years ago and I put in a little coffee bar and above my coffee bar, because I always wanted to display my mugs because I have about Mm, well, probably about a hundred different pottery mugs wow. from, from <laughs> all over the place because I, I, you know, don't have two the same. And I wanted, I put wanted shelves above my coffee bar so that I could display all of my mugs. And I love having people come in and say, "Oh, choose your mug," you know. And it's it's fun to see the ones that people pick mm. and uh, and the ones they like to use. And uh, yeah, I like having them out and displayed and and having all different ones for sure. Yeah, and then as a potter, you kind of get some good marketing experience from that because if you if I find that if you tell someone or ask them, not tell them, hey, what do you like in a mug? They can't really yeah. put their fingers on it. 
But、mm-hmm. if you offer them the option of picking a mug that they would like, they have no problem coming up with the one that they want to use. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know, some people like a smaller mug. Some people like a bigger mug. They like different handles. Yeah, I mean, it's it's kind of it's hard as a potter. Like I have people asking for all different shapes and sizes, and and I kind of have to. I I would never be able to kind of like satisfy everybody's needs, so I kind of go with the one that I feel that I like the best and、mm. the size and everything. But、um, yeah, there really is, you know, a mug for every every person. <laughs> yeah, well, I will <laughs> lit, tell you, a lid for every pot and a mug for every person. Yeah, I. <laughs> My big criteria with the mug is I have to be able to hold it comfortably, and I hate the fat, fat lips on the mugs because it looks like I have a drinking problem. Every time I go to drink, <laughs> it's dribbling down both sides of my mouth and dripping on my shirt. It's,、yeah. it's really awful. So、yeah. I like a thinner mug lip, but I don't want it too thin because when you get them really, really thin, that's when they chip. I find. Yeah, you don't want it to feel too dainty either. You yeah, feel、exactly. like you can. Yeah, that you can use it.、Mm-hmm. I've had guess, mugs like that too before, where they're very thin, and you're almost afraid to to use it. It yeah, definitely a, won't go in the dishwasher. <laughs>、mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. So this is really cool because if you go to something like the Pine Tree Potters Guild Spring Pottery Sale, then、mm-hmm. you get a chance to see all kinds of different pottery. Yeah, so much stuff. All different colors, you know. It's really neat to see, you know, the different potters and the different styles that they like.、Um, you know, it's it's amazing just to、mm-hmm. see how so many people can create so many different things. And and I used to have people in my, you know, when I taught classes, you know, they said, "Wow, the, you know, there's really so much you can do." And I said, "Yeah, really, it's just your imagination that is your limit." You know, there's so many different things that you can create. You can. You know, we have potters at Pine Tree that、um, hand draw their designs on their mugs. Potters that、um, you know like to use different glazes. Some that like to carve into the mugs.、Um, yeah, so it's 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 such a variety, and it's really neat to see. And it's funny because people come through, and a lot of times they'll come several times over the four days, and they'll say like. You know, I saw stuff that I didn't even see before. You know,、right. and they'll、yep. they'll come and they'll buy something each time they come because each time they come they see something different.、Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And and it depends on what you've got in your head, what you preconceive. You know,、mm-hmm. when you first go in and you say, "Oh, well, I'm looking for a bowl," or "Oh, I'm looking for a mug," and then you kind of are you have your side blinders on to everything else because you're looking for that one thing. And it's fun to think outside the box because I have quite a few ornaments on my Christmas tree now that are handmade pottery ornaments that I've collected from craft shows. Yeah, yeah. And people often don't think, "Oh, I'm going to go to a pottery show and find a Christmas decoration," but you do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have、uh, a lot of our potters make really、uh, beautiful Christmas ornaments、uh, that we sell at the winter sale,、um, or I guess it's we call it the holiday sale now in、um, the third week of November. But yeah, for spring, you know, it's right before Mother's Day, so it's nice because you can pick out something for Mother's Day. Um, you know, we have potters that do plant pots and vases, and and yeah, it's it's a great place to find、uh, a gift or a gift for yourself.、Mm-hmm. And the planters are so gorgeous;、mm-hmm. they really are. Again, it's something that I don't know. It feels to me to be more natural. It gives a natural feel to the natural plant that you have, yeah, in your house. Yes, <laughs> just, yeah, for sure. Seems to go hand in hand, doesn't it? Just. Get yeah, that、absolutely. whole natural feel going. So when you go to the the sale and the the event for the charity is the first night, so that's the fourth.、Um, no, actually, so the charity event is only in the fall because、oh, okay,、um, it's a lot of work getting those five hundred bowls organized and finding restaurants that can provide the soup,、um, you know, for three hundred people. So、um, yeah, so we can only do that once a year. So that's just in the fall. But we do have a table、um, designated at the sale where 100% where potters、uh, donate pieces for that table, and 100% of those proceeds go、okay. to the Empty Bowls charity. So、um, yeah, all right. Yeah. So that still you still have the charity side of things, even though it is、yes. the spring sale. Yeah, 
Well, I'm also the type of person who, gosh, we've talked a lot about me this morning, but I do sort of get my Christmas gifts starting in the spring and moving through to Christmas. So I hope some of the potters have some of their Christmas stuff out. If they, if, if anyone's listening and you're a potter in that sale, put out a couple of things that you can hang on a Christmas tree. Cause even I, I just went to Panama and the only souvenir I brought back was a handmade pottery seahorse. Oh, and it's for my tree. And I'll look at my oh. Christmas tree. My Christmas tree is a mishmash of all kinds of different things. But I will definitely have that there. And every time I see it, I don't have to write on it, Panama 2023. I just yeah. know that that's where I was when I got that ornament. And it makes me feel good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Yeah. It's funny that you mentioned that because I, I was just thinking, like, I wonder if, you know, if Christmas ornaments would be good to put out at the spring sale, because sometimes people do pick them up all year round. Yeah. Well, those stores, the Christmas tree, the Christmas decoration stores that used to be just pop ups at Christmas are now a permanent structure in Niagara on the Lake or all these different you know, places where people like to stroll around and shop. They have these Christmas stores that are their holiday stores, I guess you would call them now, but they're there all year round because people are inspired whenever they're out, you know? Right. Yeah, yeah, that's so true. All right, well, I'll be expecting to find something to hang on my tree when I go. (laughs) Okay, I'll I'll try to have something ready for you. Just a couple of little things, you know? Yeah. Well, speaking of thinking outside the box with pottery, I will tell you that um, some of the things that I've purchased over the years, I have a little dish from you that um, used to match my cup that I broke. <laughs> uh, but I use it for tea bags. I take the tea mm-hmm. bag out and I set it on this little little dish and it's cute because it used to match my mug and now it just complements my other mug. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> and And... That's something that people don't think about. My daughter uses one of your little dishes for um, her rings and her earrings at night before she goes to bed. She tends to wear the same ones over and over again, so she just puts them in the little dish in her bathroom before she goes to bed. Yeah, it's great. There's so many different ways that you can use things, and and you know when you look at something, don't think that it just has one purpose. You know, um, I try to kind of keep my stuff um, as multifunctional as possible, too, so that you can use it for a variety of of things. And, you know, I've had people buy like little trays and they're going to use it for their cat food for cats. And and, uh, you know, so their cats have a very nice, special little dish to eat off of. But wow, that's um, one lucky cat. (laughs) Yeah. 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 So, um, you know, yeah, don't kind of like think that something just has to be used for one purpose. Okay. When you think, I don't really need a mug, I'm not going to go to the pottery sale. Go and check it out. It is just like going to a gallery, only you get all these different artists in one place at one time. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And it's free admittance. So, you know, you don't have to pay to go in. And uh, it's just, you know, it's neat to go in and and see um, all the different creations. And it is it is kind of like going to a gallery for free and being able to see, you know, different artistic creations. And, um, you know, it's in a great location too in downtown Newmarket. So there's tons of like restaurants there and and uh, different, you know, areas to park and and uh, yeah, it's a great uh, it's a great sale for sure. Yeah, it's lots of there's lots of things to do in the neighborhood, so don't just make it a stop in at the pottery show and leave. You know, make it a an afternoon or a morning. You know, go down, yeah. and check it out, and make a little day of it. It's a, it's a nice thing to do. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Now um, these shows are coming up this summer this one in particular, but all kinds of shows are coming back. So I would encourage people to go and support the artists. They've had some lean couple of years, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. It has been definitely um, tougher um, for some other than others. You know, there's a lot of potters that um, both, uh, you know, people in the family are artists and, uh, you know, it's been trying times for sure. So, um, yeah, it's great to kind of like get back out and support these events and, and support the, you know, the, P- the people that kind of like make things, you know, by hand. Mm-hmm. 
And make our lives a little nicer to live because we've got something in our hands that feels good and looks good and we're happy to have. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Okay, I've always wanted to ask a potter, what is the difference between a signed piece and a stamped piece? Sometimes you find a piece of pottery that is signed on the bottom and sometimes you find a piece of pottery that has a stamp on the bottom. And I was at a secondhand store with a friend whose father was a potter. And she said, look at this. And it was a potter from Newmarket, but it was at the Karen Share in Stouffville. And she said to me, it's signed by him, whatever the potter's name was. All of his new stuff has the stamp. So you know this is one of his earlier pieces. My dad will be thrilled to have it. And she bought it for him for Father's Day hmm. for the tune of like $5. Um so what is the difference between a signed piece and a stamped piece? Or is there a difference? As far as I know, there's no difference. <laughs> um, you know, I think probably it just depends on what the potter uh, decides that they want to do, how they want to do their piece. So I have always um, signed my pieces. Um, but, you know, I also know potters that have created a little stamp and they have like a little bit of a, an insignia or a logo that they, um, prefer to put on their piece. So it's really just the potter's preference and, uh, just, you know, aesthetics as far as I know. <laughs> yeah. I, and I guess you could extrapolate and say when they're producing tons and tons and tons of stuff, it's just easier to stamp, 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 stamp instead right. of sign your name all the time. But I, I kind of like the signature. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I um, I like both. And uh, I know that I don't like getting a piece that doesn't have any mark at all. Sometimes you find those pieces. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so I think like really, it, it doesn't really make that much of a difference, you know, what kind of mark you have on it. But it is nice to have like the potter's mark stamp or, or mark. sign or a yeah. stamp on, yeah. on the piece for sure. Definitely. Well, Jennifer, I'm so happy that you were able to join us today. How do people get more information about you and then also about the show coming up? Um, my, I, I have uh, an Instagram page just at Cregan Clay. Mm -hmm. So uh, C-R-E-E-G-G-A-N. Um, so you can kind of find out what shows and stuff I'll be in there. And then for the pottery sale... Um, you can go to pinetreepotters.ca and uh, it's on the main page and uh, you can find out all of the information there and it's, it's May 4th to 7th this year. Well, Jennifer, thank you so much for joining us today on Fresh Waves. We've had a really, really nice time. Um, if anyone would like to hear this broadcast again, you can go to our YouTube channel, Fresh Waves Radio. Do hit subscribe. We love to have subscribers. And we are on the air every Sunday morning at 8 o'clock on Whistle FM. Thanks again for joining us, Jennifer. Have a fabulous day, everyone. This is Bren Masson for Fresh Waves. We'll catch you again next time.